So now let's go to where God know God wants us to go. Persistent. <laughs> so we've dealt with clean, we've dealt with dressed, we've dealt with prepared, we've dealt with motivated, we dealt with consistent last week. Now this week we're going to deal with persistent. Persistent. You've got to be persistent. Now, I want to do this in the context of Ephesians chapter 6. I'm not going to read the scripture again because we want you to open your Bible to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 15. We're going to meet a very persistent Canaanite sister this morning. This precious lady was persistent. And we're going to learn some lessons in the attributes of a persistent believer this morning. Because you are washed in the blood, I understand. Hopefully, you, you, you've been prepared and dressing yourself daily in the attributes, the armor of God. Pray that that's going on in your life every day on a daily basis. I pray that you're being prepared and that you're just absolutely motivated every day to follow Jesus Christ with all of your heart. And you got to do it consistently. That's what this has got to take. Long obedience in the same direction. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, you're going to have to be persistent. There's going to be some bumps along the way. There's going to be some dead ends. You're going to feel like you're not going to make it. As a matter of fact, I was looking back at my office wall at home, and a couple of years ago I was in there praying about 8, 30, 9 o'clock one night. And we were going through just some tough, trying times. And then I was just pouring my heart out to God and weeping before God. And I just heard the voice of God say, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. And that's, I don't know that God uses ain't on a regular basis. I guess he knew how I needed to get communicated to. You ain't seen nothing yet. And man, I took that in a positive sense. So I got up and got a red Sharpie out of my drawer and I wrote it on the door right next to my desk put the date the time quotation marks you ain't seen nothing yet close quotation marks God that was a direct quote from God well it ended up being a positive thing but I'm gonna tell you have you ever had somebody tell you it's gonna get worse before it gets better okay that's what God meant by that but you got to be persistent because things went downhill before we ever started seeing them go uphill again. But God had given us persistence. That it didn't matter what the valley held, we knew who held the valley. And, and we were just keeping on walking regardless of situation or circumstance. And we stand on the other side of this thing seeing the hand of God, what the pieces that he has moved and the, the things that he's done. And that's why I just come and praise him and just lay it all out before his feet and say, Lord, thank you. All I can say is thank you. I didn't have anything to do with any of it. We just made the decision to keep on walking by faith, persistent. So we're dealing with spiritual warfare. We understand that. Let me give you the definitions of persistence. It's an adjective like consistent was. But listen to this. The first definition is continuing firmly or absolutely in a course of action in spite of difficulty of opposition. I don't know about y'all, that sounds like spiritual warfare. <laughs> continuing firmly or absolutely in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. Now listen to this one. Man, if, if this is just a beautiful summary to me of God and the persistence I'm glad he persisted after me continuing to exist or endure over a prolonged period of time continuing to exist or endure over a long period of time you know the King James Version may say this best God changeth not he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The book of Hebrews reminds us. He's persistent. And if you're looking for a point of origin in your life to anchor you down, 
come to God because our God will not be moved. He's persistent. He is going to continue to exist and he is going to continue to endure for all of eternity. And the huge news is so are we. And that's why the decisions of the invitation of Jesus Christ to become our redeemer so that we could in turn be reconciled to the Father. And then we get to persist in that relationship. Because you're going to be told all the time that, ah, it's not real. And some of that Superman, Batman, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, fictional kind of stuff. But I want you to listen to Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Matthew 15, 21 through 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity, and when you see that word Canaanite, you can think something similar to like a Samaritan, a, not just necessarily a half-breed, but not somebody that was, eh, this is not a Jew. This is not a chosen one of Israel. <laughs> A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from a demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Hey, Jesus, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. In other words, she's worrying us. Get rid of this woman. He answered to the woman, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Then the woman came and knelt before Jesus. Lord, help me, she said. Jesus replied to her, Is it not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs? He called his lady a dog. Yes, Lord, she said. <laughs> but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fell from the master's table. Then Jesus answered, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Now, here's some attributes, and, and they're not long points this morning. These are points of discussion for us in each of our lives, okay? I want us to learn from this precious lady who was persistent. And here's just some lessons straight from the scripture. Here's number one. In her troubles, she knew who to run to. That was the first and foremost thing. She knew who to get to. Let me ask you, where do you run when moments present themselves in your life and you know that you can't do anything about it this lady could do nothing to help her daughter but she knew who could now I don't know what's going on in the room I don't know what's going on in anybody's life but what I can tell you is this it doesn't matter what's going on when you know who to run to just know that the one you're running to named Jesus is greater by far than what's going on in anybody's life. Just run to him. You say, well, brother, I'm a real logical thinker and I got to understand all this stuff. Well, well you're never going to wrap your head around Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit. You say, well, I just can't believe if I can't wrap my head around it. Folks, if it was all just purely logical, faith wouldn't be necessary. We would believe because we understand. I believe even when I don't understand. How in the world can over 2,000 years pass from a cross called Calvary and it still be making a difference in my life today in this millennium? How in the world can there be that kind of power in the shed blood of the Lamb of God? Had we, had we come too far and evolved too much, 
Hadn't evil gotten so dark and technology so great that the blood of the Lamb of God cannot handle it anymore? And the, the, the answer is unequivocally, no, it has not. The blood has not lost any of its power. Pre-cross or post-cross, and it never will. She knew where to run. The only way she could be persistent is because she had been consistent, because she had been motivated, because she had been prepared, because she had been dressed, because at some point she had been cleaned in the blood of the Lamb. Right? Because people before the cross were saved in the same way as we people after the cross were saved. They just were looking forward to the blood as we are now looking back to the blood. Same process of salvation. Number two, and boy, here's a key to persistence. Absolutely nothing or nobody was keeping her away from Jesus. You know, there was another woman with an issue of blood, right? And it said that Jesus was coming down in the midst of all kind of festival activities and there were just people crowding around him. And it said that woman with the issue of blood, she just started moving folks out of the way. She was a persistent woman, right? And she got in there and she didn't, she said, I, I'm not even worried about talking to Jesus. I just need to touch the hem of his garment. And that's what she did, man. She didn't let anything get, stop her from getting there to grab a hold of that hem. And when she grabbed a hold of the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ, it says in the scripture that even Jesus felt power leave his body. And it healed the lady. He said, who touched me? And his disciples full of themselves, like a lot of Christians, me, a lot of times I am. Lord, what do you mean who touched you? We're in the midst of thousands and thousands of people. No telling who touched you. No, 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 no. Something different. This wasn't somebody brushing up against me. This is somebody. Faith touched his him. It wasn't a sick woman's hand that touched him. It was that woman's faith that grabbed the hem of the garment of God. And her faith touched the heart of God walking down that cobblestone street that day and the heart of God jolted a little bit when the woman's faith her faith caused his power to reciprocate and bring healing period I hear people saying Lord give me a sign well, I'm kind of like old Bill Ingvall said, here's your sign. You don't need a sign. You just need to understand, by faith, I'm getting to Jesus. And nobody or nothing is going to stop me. Now, let me tell you something. There's going to be a lot that tries to stop you. But this is where persistence pays off. You just keep walking. You just keep walking. You just keep walking. Number three. This is a very key point. The kingdom of darkness also believes in persistence. Anybody believe that? Let me tell you something. The devil is a persistent foe. He knows the word of God better than any of us put together and even the word of God collectively. If you could take all of our knowledge of the word of God, you could put it us all together and he would still know astronomically more about the word of God. Matter of fact, he knows the word of God so well that he can now manipulate the word of God to try to get us to believe the word of God is not the word of God. Right? That's what he did to Adam and Eve. And that's what he's still doing now. So you don't think he's even got a little even more wise since the Garden of Eden era? I mean, he's seen everything that could be seen. He don't just know my weaknesses. He knows my great, 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 great,
It's up to you, but I'm going to tell you right now, it can be broken in the name of Jesus. You don't have to have that same weakness. Always know the kingdom of darkness is going to be very persistent. They're never, ever, ever going to leave us alone. They're going to always be yapping at our heels. And I just think that's why we need to learn how to stomp. I'm going to tell you something, man. If I, get, if I see a snake, now if that snake is doing his thing and leaving me alone, we're good. But if I see a snake and it's getting close to my house or anything else and putting family in danger and all these different things, I'm going to do whatever I got to do to get that serpent away from my safe space, right? I'm getting it out of there. And I've gotten to a point where I didn't have anything and I just had to stomp. And you're talking about some massive, furious stomping. It's hard to be faster than a snake. But I'm going to tell you what, you better get with it. So sometimes that's why we have to just get a little carried away in worship. And then you're looking at somebody and say, my gosh, what are they got? What are they on? Are they the ones that left that box in the kitchen last night? No. They've realized the presence of a serpent and it's time to do some furious stomping. That's what every opportunity for every day that we have, just do some serious stomping, man. If you don't do this consistently, you're never going to be persistent without consistent. So you just got to learn to stomp. Now, there's many ways to stomp. Matter of fact, Jesus said it's the, my heel that's going to Amen. stomp him for the last time, right? Stomp. You don't have to be prey to the predator. I don't have to be prey to the predator. My children and grandchildren do not have to be prey to the predator. The way that you keep your family and yourself from becoming prey to the predator is to pray to King Jesus. The devil's like a roaring lion. I heard old Rod Parsley say this one time. I like to jump out of my, he talked about stomping, right? I stomped when he said it. He was talking about the passage in First Peter that talked about the devil going to and fro, seeking like a roaring lion, all that stuff. And he said, I, I went on a safari one time and I talked to the guide and the, the neat thing was I heard a lion roar in the wild and he said it was just, you know, just, unbelievable to hear a true lion roar in the wild and the guide said you know here's the cool thing about it especially with you being a Christian pastor and all he said you know the only other animal in the whole animal kingdom that will roar when a lion roars is another lion that's the only animal that's bold enough to talk back well the devil may be roaming around going to and fro seeking whom he may devour and doing all the roaring lion stuff but let me introduce you to another lion his name is the lion of the tribe of Judah and you may be hearing a lot of lion roar right now from the kingdom of darkness but I'm just going to tell you something there's another lion that's going to roar on your behalf so yes the kingdom of darkness is persistent but the kingdom of light is even more persistent Number four, this precious lady, evidently somewhere along the way, knew the keys to what it meant to be persistent. And her, in this illustration, gives us one of the most wonderful things as an attribute of persistence that everybody in here and on social media and in the church needs to hear and needs to hear it very clearly and very loudly. Here's number four. Listen, if you want to practice persistence in your faith, listen, listen, listen. She was not offended. She wasn't. This lady walked up to Jesus got his attention, spoke to him, and the scripture says he didn't say a word. 
And we got folks that leave church because somebody didn't speak to them on Sunday morning. I got offended. <laughs> We're too easily offended to practice a persistent faith. Not only did Jesus not even speak to the lady or acknowledge her presence, but the disciples were sitting there talking about her and said, Jesus, send her away. All this crying out, it, it's really distracting us. We're worried about uh, She is worrying us. Jesus, just get rid of her. Send her away. How many people are not in church today because somebody was talking about them or somebody posted about them? And look, I understand it hurts. I understand it's painful. But you got to persist. You got to, at least I got a good subject. You know? And I'm not being no, no smart aleck about it. But I mean, I want you to understand something. Anybody that's going to talk about a flaw of mine, that right there lets me know that I need to be praying for that person more than I've ever prayed for them. Because they revealed something that's going on in their heart. Because anybody that's got time to talk about my flaw is ignoring their own flaws. Right? So see, the way to not be offended is to see that this is not about them. This is about the kingdom of darkness that's motivating them. And I am understanding that now because I've got the helmet of salvation put upon my head and hope and wisdom is going through my veins now. And I'm not thinking with my perspective anymore. I'm thinking with God's perspective now. And I'm not going to be offended. I am going to be called to my knees for that people or that person or that group of people. I'm going to let that little click have their way for a moment. I'm going to let them win the battle. But God is winning the war. But that's not what Christians do. Oh, I, they, they have talked about me. And we take our ball and we go home. And the problem is we take our ball and we don't go home. We take our ball and run into another church with the same pain and the same philosophy and the same perspective and it's just just a little while till somebody else is talking about me or somebody else didn't speak to me and the same thing's going to happen you're going to get offended and you're going to run away and right off into somebody else's church when all the whole time God's just trying to get our attention I say I'm trying to teach you to be a warrior instead of a worrier and I'm trying to give you my perspective so that you won't be offended and I can actually use you to change a person or a group of people in a church of imperfect people that's what I'm trying to do persistence it's what it takes to come to that point in our faith. Y'all, the armor of God is not to just be pretty or to sound pretty or to acquire gifts. It's for actual battle. Problem is the church has been a cruise ship and not a battleship. We spend most of our time rearranging the chairs on the Lido deck of God and hunting the buffet instead of manning the guns watching the radar being alert being the watchman that God has called us to be so that we know who's coming and what's coming and how it's coming and we can see the wolf no matter what sheep's clothing he's in. And we're going to call it out and gun it down. Not literally. Because we don't fight with carnal weapons. 
we win our war on our knees she was not offended and I'm going to promise you man if you're walking with a spirit of offense and a root of bitterness because of that offense in your life this morning let it go have a honor have a honor and an Elsa moment let it go it is not worth it let it go number five number five she was humble she was humble how does somebody call you a dog <laughs> and, and you don't get just all bent out of shape and sorts about it is it not right that I should take the bread from the children of Israel and cast it to the dogs I'd be like God who do you think you are <laughs> how big of a boy are you <laughs> you know I mean it's crazy when you think about it now, he didn't mean it in like a good sense you know what I mean I mean he was calling the lady and her people a dog this is who my father chose and everybody else y'all just dogs he wasn't being offensive to her he was just stating the fact of what was going on and he was checking and trying her heart where are you at well, who, who, what's really going on inside of you are you going to persist in prayer even though you don't get instantaneous results man it's awesome to get instantaneous results but it doesn't work that way every time well, I've been praying for a couple of weeks now and I'm going to tell you man I'm just exhausted because God hadn't done what, what I felt like God is supposed to do well number one God don't do what you feel like he was supposed to do I mean that's the first lesson to learn right there but next it's on God's time frame God's got things going on that you don't know and I don't know that he's got going on and this needs to happen so this person witnesses what happens and this needs to happen so that what God's going to do eventually is going to accomplish the purpose in your life that it was sent to accomplish because if it happened right now you would steal the glory and the honor of God because of it and then you'd be in worse shape than you were when you started the prayers. So you gotta think like this. You gotta think like it. Persist. I don't know how many weeks it'll take. I don't, know, I don't know how many years it'll take. Persist. Oh, I'm just, I'm just wore out from praying. Really? I get up every morning and, and pray, and I'm going to tell you, man, it don't wear me out. Matter of fact, it is refreshing to my soul. What wears me out is when I forget or don't do it or get in a hurry and do it. Don't do it. That's what wears me out. I'm like, oh my gosh, man, I feel like I have been walking through, through just mud all day today. And then it dawns on me. I left home naked this morning. I just left home spiritually naked. This, I, yeah, I'm just going to tell you, I don't care how good a shape I used to be in, I still would not leave home naked. I just never was that kind of person. Because it would just be completely inappropriate. Embarrassing. But how many times are we willing to leave home spiritually naked? And then we wondered why we're so easily offended and our feelings are so hurt and all of these different things. I, I'm just asking God on a daily basis to give me such a soft heart, but give me skin that's like 20 times thicker than it's supposed to be. Because I want to get to a point where we're just hardly, I mean, just nothing offends me. That's what I want. That's what I'm praying for in life. That I can just see God's perspective on things. Number, number six, because of her persistence, her faith, she was rewarded. What was she rewarded with? Her daughter was healed. Her daughter was healed. Her daughter was completely set free. 
And, you know, you, you may or may not be used to some of the verbiage that's been used in here today. We've talked about spirits, and we've talked about demons, and we've talked about curses, and we've talked about all that kind of stuff, and it doesn't really not here or there with me, whether you're familiar with it or not, because, I mean, it's real. It's the reality of the situation. If there's a heaven, there's a hell. If there's a God, there's a devil, and they're all still working, praise God. But she was rewarded because her daughter was set free from an evil spirit that was tormenting her. And I just believe that we just got to be set free. In the name of Jesus Christ, set completely free. And that's that beautiful reward of healing. What's got you bound up? Be set free. Be set free. And number seven, it makes complete sense that I would say this to close with this. She was persistent. She did not get put off by anything in that whole scenario. She just kept coming back, kept coming back. Well, I don't know if you should talk back to God. <laughs> she didn't talk back to God. She just refused to leave God alone, right? And I just pray that I'm in amongst a group of people this morning that just absolutely refuse to leave God alone. Even when it feels like that God's left us alone. Because, see, that's where we get offended and we lose our humility. And we say, I can't believe he would do this to me. Because there's going to be times that you feel like God just don't care. Because if he loved me like he said he loved me, there's no way he'd let me be going through what I'm going through. And it could be that he's seeking to build persistence in your life and my life like this Canaanite sister had in her life. And it could be that our God is saying, well, let's see how bad. Let's see how bad you, you want this. You know, there's Christians that will pray harder for the kind of car they believe God ought to bless them with then they're praying for all the lost billions of souls in our world. I've seen people cut out pictures out of car magazines and paste them all over their walls. I'm believing for this vehicle right here. I'm believing for it. I'm just going to be really honest with you. I believe God could care less what kind of vehicle we drive. When there are billions and billions of lost souls that are going to be separated from him for all of eternity. I don't believe God gives a flip about our vehicles. Just being honest with you. Oh, I'm believing for a house. Let me tell you how to get rewarded with some of that stuff. Not what you want, what you need. Everybody needs basic needs. And God says, I'll pray. I clothe the fields with things that are more splendor than king's robes. Not a sparrow falls to the ground without my knowledge of it. Don't worry about tomorrow. I got that too. But if you want to see God move in your basic needs category, you get way more concerned and consumed with those souls that are going to be separated from him. And you spend your time claiming those souls for the kingdom instead of wondering about who it is that God's going to use to bless you with that vehicle or that home or that bill payoff. Because see, I see people walking like that. And they'll come into places of worship and they're seeking certain people types out. And they get close to these certain people types because they think those certain people types are the one. Oh, yeah, that's got to be the ones God's going to use to bless me like I need to be blessed. Mm -mm. So see this, you become seeking people and not seeking God. And church, therefore, becomes a business and not a house of worship. Right? She was just simply persistent 
And God knew at some point in that, so he's new to start with, of course, but at some point in that scenario, she had proven herself to him. And to those that were in that vicinity. And not only was her daughter healed and her forever changed, but I can guarantee you his disciples and those others that were looking on and hearing it said, hmm, hmm. Maybe we ought not be so easily offended. Maybe we should, maybe we should humble ourselves before God. Maybe we should quit being concerned about who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom and focus on walking with the king. I wonder what all rewards are going to be in heaven. I don't care. I don't care. Will I have a crown? Will I not have a crown? Will I be on the west wing or the east wing of God's mansion? What are we going to eat? What are we going to do? I don't care. I absolutely have zero concern about that. Because I am not going to focus on what I feel like I'm supposed to get from God. Because when you focus on that which you feel like you're supposed to get from God, you miss God. The disciples were focused on who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom. And they were walking with the king. See how easy it is? But oh, persistence. With the woman with the demon-possessed daughter. With the woman with the issue of blood. With the paralyzed man that the four friends had to just tear the roof up to lower him down to Jesus persistence persistence so preacher what are you saying to us here it is and I believe this is God's call to every person under the sound of my voice this morning what is it in your life Whether it was a a call from God, a promise from God. What is it in your life that you gave up on too quickly? I'm just going to let it sit for just a second. Because I know what the Holy Spirit is doing right now. What is it in your life that you knew without a shadow of a doubt God had spoken into the existence in your soul but you just gave up on it too quickly? It's time to know where to run. It's time to let nothing or nobody stop you from getting there. It's time to throw a fence out the door. It's time to humble ourselves. And I believe because of that faithful persistence, God's about to reward some folks in this room today. Because we're coming back to say, God, I confess it. I got frustrated got angry and I gave up and there's some folks that says that there's not even a God because if there was a God there's no way he would have done me like that and Lord I'm so sorry because now I know I just needed to keep on coming back keep on walking because you were turning me into who you needed me to be and I was settling for who I wanted to be. And Lord, I want persistence in my life. So would you stand with us?
I'm going to ask you all over this building. Doesn't matter to me if you move and come up front or doesn't. That's completely out of the wheelhouse this morning. It's right where you are, just as still and as silent as you can be. I just want you to ask God. Show me what I gave up on. Show me what I did not persist for, Lord. Because that which God promised you is still right in the same spot where God said it would be. He wants you to have it. You just got to be persistent enough to come and get it. Jesus, I just ask you to canvas our souls. Father, I'm speaking to people with broken dreams, with failing health, with promises they knew that were promised, but still remain unfulfilled. I'm speaking to broken hearts. I'm speaking to loneliness. I'm speaking to depression. I'm speaking to disease, to relationships. It's Lord, all those dashed hopes and dreams that make us unbearable and calloused and stubborn. Lord, bring us to the point of persistence where it doesn't matter what we're hearing, what others are saying, even what they're doing and how they're acting out. I'm just getting to God no matter the cost. And when you persist because of your faith, you will be rewarded. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. These altars are open and I'm going to be at it. (laughs) If you need to join me, join me. Do what God's calling you to do this morning.